check, 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 check. How you doing, everybody? So you got a little time to go and get yourself a nice bathroom break, get a snack and come back because we're about to get really, really, really big and bad and interesting up in here. Yes, it is the virtual period party and we are about to have the most interesting conversation. And I'm so excited about this because this is something that was considered impossible before, but nothing is impossible, on, everything is impossible until it is done. All right? So before I get into the conversation, I want to say another big up to our sponsor, Curves, for being on board with us today because we are making some serious, serious changes. Now we want to say welcome to everybody who's just joining on, on this live. And I want to say thank you to the folks who joined us on the previous conversation because, of course, you know, for those who were there, that it was absolutely amazing. And we're about to get even better now because we are talking to fathers. Yes, I said it. We're going to be talking to men today about menstruation. And it is so important for us to talk to men about menstruation because for a very long time, girls are taught that they should hide their period so well that they should ensure that they never have to expose anybody, any male to their period, especially the father. When I was growing up, there was a rule that if you have your period, nobody should be able to be able to tell. So when you go in the bathroom, you have to be able to wrap up everything. I have to hide it and they must never see the product. They must never know that there's a period going on. And if you mess up yourself, you have to hide that. Sometimes we sleep and wake up and we mess up the sheet. We have to hide that. But the whole thing is, it's a nice secret that we must learn to keep, especially from the men in our lives. Now, I'm happy to report that that paradigm is shifting. I'm happy to report that there are fathers who are getting very involved in their lives, in the lives of the women around them when it comes to their period. Because let's face it, we are all here because of a period. We're here because our mothers had a period, right? So we really want to talk about some of the experiences that these fathers have had and just some of the things that we can do as women to help them help us. So I'm very, very excited by the panel that we have here this morning. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to introduce all of them to you one time. We're going to introduce them to you one one because each of them have their own story and their own vibe. And we're going to jump right into it. Now, this gentleman is a very, very close friend of mine. And he don't know that he might come first. You know, but I'm going to throw him in the cutter because he knows how to deal with things. And he's just going to jump out and they big and bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking, of course, about my good friend Ryan, Ryan Bailey, and he is a father, and you know, he also has been exposed to some of the work that we have been doing with her flow, and so I really felt that it was necessary for him to be a part of the conversation this morning because of his, he, he's really very in tune with women and, and some of the things that we go through. So, Ryan, good morning. Morning to you. <laughs> How you doing? So, I'm doing just fine. So I just want to start. Say, by I, say I come to the I come to the party. Me, I love on red shirt. Well, I know. Yeah, it's a bully parade night. I heard that it was a party, so I'm gonna come to enjoy the party. Just come to enjoy it as it should be, as it should be, and I really appreciate your presence. So I want to ask you right away: What are your thoughts on menstruation from a man's point of view? Because we are, from the woman's point of view, we have been taught all our life to keep periods away from you so that you don't have to experience it, so you don't have to see that we are, we are having it. So what are your thoughts on, on that whole culture? And just what do you think about periods overall? Well, obviously, I think that um, being here would mean that I think that it is a, it is a discussion that needs to be had. Um, I am here because I think it's important for us to try to normalize the whole conversation of things that are happening in our society and with women in particular. Um, for me, I grew up in a household with Wolipa man. My brother is a Wolipa brother as I have. But in, in any case, um, the, the, the subject of, although it was a liberal household, the subject of period was kind of taboo. And it was not until something very serious happened to, to my mother that we realized that this is something that ought not to be in a closet, but to be spoken about. She had a, she, she fell ill and dropped down nearly dead because she was hemorrhaging. I, uh, I had no clue as to what to do or what is what or what was happening really. But um, fortunately, I was able to call 
um, a 911 system in where I grew up that actually worked. And the people were very kind so that they, they, when they asked me what was happening, I could describe what was happening and they helped me as to what to do. So you want to see me I put things in a bag and try to fix up, find, find, find everything so that when the ambulance came that she would be all right, you know? So that yeah. in my mind, trying to maintain some of her dignity. But of in any course. case, that situation, it turned out that she had fibroids. And that is the thing that I learned afterwards that a lot of women within our community have that issue. So it led me along the, the, the path to try to understand and to study what it meant and the kind of things that they had to go through. So um, to make the long story short, mother had to have a, what is called a hysterectomy. My mm -hmm. father was totally against it. So he brought home all kind of information. I remember reading a book called The Hysterectomy Hoax. So he thought that he didn't have to do that, but in, in, instead of doing that, that you could eat, you could change what, how you eat and what you ate right. in order for, for life to be comfortable and for you to shrink them. Anyway, she didn't think that, so she opted to go the, the route of the surgery. Um, for me, it was something that was, it was an interesting time because I saw the dynamics between a man who loves his woman and said, don't do that. But obviously she has to have the, the control over her own decision and her own body. Right. So during that journey, I learned a, a hell of a lot. Um, I remember at one point going shopping with her and in the car and when she come out, I noticed a oh, and holy heap of blood. But um, I said something to her and then she come back and she sat down not realizing that you know these are the same boys that you raised we understand what are going you know just talk but she didn't talk and i didn't think that it was my place to say anything but in any case um i got out of the car find a little jacket to wrap around her she wrapped around the jacket and she went into the drugstore we never said one word about it even afterwards up to this day we're gonna talk about it but i knew what was happening and the research led me to a point where we kind of understand, say this thing is a natural thing. It is going to happen. It will happen and without it, we cannot be here. So right. um, my that kind of shaped my perspective as to, as to how to deal with period and to have a certain level of comfort as to how to talk about it. Um, as far as my experiences outside of that, I've, I've been fortunate to, to, in my relationships to to have people who are open, people where, no, I, I haven't had a relationship with, with close minded people. So this has never been a taboo subject in my personal relationships. And, right. uh, and it's this journey into trying to normalize the conversation is one that I feel it's important for, for us to be a part of. And I think that if we find women who understand that the, the process should include men and yeah. know how to bring us in the conversation. I think that we would have a much better understanding as to what is going on. Um, for me, uh, as, as your friend and as a whole heap of other things dealing with what you're doing, um, I have been exposed to, to the situation of periods in an in a upfront and, and, and kind of close way with students who, who experience excruciating pain emotionally yeah. and physically whilst they're having their period. And you can imagine as a man not having no clue as to what is happening, why the picnic girl lay down on the floor, why she can't complete, complete her homework, why she don't want to go to school. All of these things I have been exposed to whilst being on the road with you. And I think that there is a way to change that. And the way to change that is to have a discussion or a forum like this where you have men, not necessarily fathers, but just men in general, trying to understand what happens during that time. How do we manage ourselves in that time? Yeah. How do we make you comfortable in that time? Uh -oh, we make ourselves yeah. comfortable too, because you can certainly be miserable in other time too. So, um, so that's my, my, my view. Well, thank, thank you so much. You said, you said so many important things. 
they, it, why is it important for us to have conversations with the men in our life? And I do agree that it's not just fathers that must be um, a part of the conversation. But I start with fathers because they are in a position to make an immediate impact. And I want to, I want to make sure that they have the tools that they need to do that. But I, I do believe that every man should be a part of this conversation. And I think this whole hiding the period away from the man part of it must stop. Because as I said before, I don't care what the question is. Ignorance is never the answer. And I think a lot of the challenges that we have with men not understanding the things that we go through comes from the fact that we don't open enough to them and we don't tell them, especially the things that make us feel hurt or make us feel vulnerable. So that is something that, as women, we really do have to address. So thank you so much for that, um, It's not Ryan. just as women, you know, is that we have a society that is based upon principles of patriarchy and yes. some of the religious, the religious um, teaching which that shows that 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 says rightly that it's an unclean time for a woman not understanding so it leads to form an opinion and that yes, opinion and can i don't be, want to start a part of the conversation there yes we're getting there i, I don't want to send something i remember it we're coming we're coming back to it all right so i'm gonna shut up then just just for now